This example problem will focus on using the triangle method to find the resultant of two vectors. The problem statement says, determine the magnitude and direction of the resultant force. And the given information shows two vectors, one at 15 degrees from the vertical, one at 25 degrees from the horizontal, with the magnitude shown. I've set up my engineering paper with given and find information. Now I need to think about how to solve this problem. With the triangle method, we will rearrange our two vectors so that they are touching tip to tail. And I'm going to move vector F2 so its tail is touching the tip of vector F1. And now I can draw the resultant vector from the tail of vector 1 to the tip of vector 2. Based on the information given, I know that the angle between vector F2 and this dotted horizontal line is 25 degrees. I also know that the angle between a, this dotted vertical line and vector F1 is 15 degrees. The dotted horizontal and dotted vertical lines form a right angle. Therefore, the sum of these three angles must be 90 degrees. Therefore, I know this interior angle is 50 degrees. Now that I know two sides in one angle, I can use the law of cosines to find the magnitude of my resultant force. And then I can use the law of sines to find any additional angles I need. I've added my vector diagram to my engineering paper. And now I can solve for the resultant force using the law of cosines. The units on 30 and 58 are in pounds, and so therefore my resultant force units are also in pounds. I get 45.023 pounds. To three significant figures, R is 45.0 pounds. I can now use the law of sines to find the other interior angles in my triangle. The only other angle I need is angle B, but for academic reasons, I'm first going to find angle A using law of sides. To find angle A, I will take the sine of A divided by the opposite side, which is 30 pounds, is equal to the sine of 50 degrees divided by its opposite side, which is the resultant force, 45.023 pounds. I find that A is equal to 30.693 degrees. Now I will do the same for angle B. To find angle B, I will take the sine of angle B divided by the length of the opposite side, 58 pounds, and set it equal to the sine of 50 degrees divided by its opposite side, 45.023 pounds. And solving for angle B, I get 80.695 degrees. Now if I look over at angle B, I'm a little surprised because I tried to draw these vectors to scale, and it seems like that angle is more than 90 degrees, so this answer is a little concerning to me. In fact, we can check it, because the angle A plus B plus the 50 degrees for the third angle should all add up to 180 degrees. Let's check it out. Well, my suspicions are right. Something's gone wrong. My three angles do not add up to 180 degrees. There is no math error. This has to do with a little quirk when using the law of sines. This is what happened when I did the calculation. The values that I put into the law of sines equation used this side, the resultant force side, the force F2 side, and this angle, so a side, a side, and an angle. Sometimes when using law of sines with these, in these conditions, uh, 
there are actually two solutions to the answer. And I was unlucky and got the wrong solution. The value that my calculator returned is the angle 80.7 as shown by these uh, dotted lines. Now the this red dotted line has the same length, 45.02. The force F2 has the same length, 58 pounds, and the angle 50 was unchanged. But you can see there are two solutions. My calculator gave me 80.7, but the correct answer is actually 99.3 degrees. This doesn't happen very often, but it can happen, and it's good to be aware of it. So what do we do? Well, the correct angle for B is 180 degrees minus the value we got above. Calculating it gives us 99.305 degrees, and that looks better. Angle B looks like it's more than 90 degrees, and 99.3 seems about right. So here's a good lesson from this. Draw your vector diagrams to scale so you can recognize if you have an error, or at least have a better chance of recognizing it. If we did a quick check and added 30.7 degrees to 99.3 degrees to 50 degrees, our three angles, that would indeed equal 180 degrees. Now we still need to find the direction of our resultant force vector. I'm going to label it like this in the figure and call that angle theta. I'm going to use angle B to find theta. I'm going to call this angle that I've drawn here as angle phi. And that's going to be equal to angle B minus this interior angle, which is 15 degrees. I get that phi is equal to 84.305 degrees. And now, looking at the figure one more time, I see the angle theta is equal to this right angle minus the angle phi. So we find that the direction of a resultant vector is 5.70 degrees from the horizontal axis. And we're done.